Horatio Nelson was born in 1758, the sixth of eleven children. His early childhood seems to have been unremarkable, despite subsequent efforts by biographers to identify in those early days signs of his future glory. He was well educated by the standard of the time, having been sent to grammar school until he was twelve. Various anecdotes describe him as a brave and adventurous boy, but these examples of his childhood bravery may be at the very least coloured by hindsight, or they may even be exaggerations or outright fabrications by his admirers or even by Nelson himself, who was a renowned self-promoter. Nelson's mother died when he was nine, leaving the surviving eight of her children. Age twelve, Nelson, Nelson learned that his uncle Maurice Suckling was appointed captain of the Raisonnable, 64 guns, and he asked his elder brother William to request that he might join him at sea. The request came from his older brother because at the time his father was ill and had been sent to Bath, a part of England where people went to recover because of the supposed healing properties of the waters there. It seems that Nelson, too, was considered to be of poor health, even at this early stage in his life, his uncle writing back, What has poor Horatio done, who is so weak, that he, above all the rest, should be sent to rough it out at sea? According to his biographer, Southey, Nelson was already greatly weakened by the ague, which was a kind of malaria indigenous to England at that time. It may have been the same condition that was affecting his father. Nelson reported on board the HMS Raisonnable aged 13, leaving his family and sleeping apart from his brother William for the first time in his life. Arriving at the docks in the cold and the rain, the young Nelson wandered about trying to reach the ship. Eventually, somebody took pity on him and helped him aboard. Coming aboard, he found that his uncle, Captain Suckling, was absent and nobody had been told that he was coming. He reportedly waited on deck until the following day before somebody took notice of him and showed him below. On the Raisonnable, Nelson was rated midshipman, the lowest ranking officer. And it was here that Nelson first suffered from seasickness, which was to be a condition that he was never to overcome. It's hard to imagine young Nelson's feelings of being on board such a vessel for the first time. The Raisonnable was also almost 50 metres long almost 14 metres across, and was home to over 500 men and boys. It must have been an imposing and awesome sight, especially to somebody of that age and so unfamiliar with the Navy. However, Nelson did not sail on board the Raisonnable. She had been commissioned as the result of a dispute over the Falkland Islands, which was settled by diplomatic means and Suckling was therefore transferred to another ship, and not having a naval appointment for Nelson, Suckling dispatched him to the West Indies on a merchant ship commanded by Captain Rathbone, his former master's mate. Rathbone was a competent seaman, but he hated the Navy, and he strongly advised Nelson against such a career, encouraging him instead to serve on board merchant ships. Under the instruction of Rathbone, Nelson twice crossed the Atlantic before being appointed commander of his uncle's longboat, which is a rowing boat used to carry men to and from his uncle's ship, which was then the Triumph 74 guns. It was probably from Rathbone that Nelson first heard the famous saying, aft the most honour, forward the better man, which means that those before the mast, the common sailors, are the better men, but those after the mast, or behind it, as the officers and the captain on the quarterdeck, they receive all the honour. This saying expressed the resentment often felt between the men and the officers at the often arbitrary reward of rewards, praise and promotion. In fact, this was something which would go on to blight most of Nelson's early career. This, then, was the unlikely start to the career of history's most celebrated and renowned naval officer.